When we think of learning environments, we often think of a classroom with walls, students sitting at desks and the teacher at the front of the room pacing back and forth. If we look around more closely, we realise that learning happens anywhere and everywhere. We start to see that there are an abundance of factors involved in preparing students for learning, engaging and motivating learners and sustaining that engagement. One factor that should be given consideration is inspiring students through working in alternative learning environments. Even within the classroom, alternative learning spaces can be included. Arranging desks so that students can collaborate in small groups, providing a reading corner and establishing a virtual learning environment are possible. A change in learning spaces with attention to the effective dimension of learning can bring on changes in behavioural and pedagogical practices and provide greater inclusivity for the diversity of learning preferences. Alternative learning spaces can bring the community into the school or allow learners to develop a relationship with their local community. A change in environment can shift the focus of power and bring the teacher and students closer together as co-learners. Often, it's the outdoor learning space which is overlooked, but which offers great potential for engaging students for deep learning. Changes in light and temperature, sound, air quality and space can all affect motivation and engagement. Allowing students to engage with their school and community environments provides a different perspective to learning within four walls. Vegetable gardens, forest areas, outdoor spaces for reflection, planning and dialogue, as well as spaces to display artworks and perform should be considered as alternatives to the traditional classroom. If students are involved in designing and creating these spaces, they are even more effective. Lenine Burke is the director of the Walking Neighbourhood Project and Dr Louise Phillips is a lecturer in the School of Education at the University of Queensland. Both are interested in alternative ways of learning and promoting intergenerational civic engagement. In responding to young learners' concerns about their lack of autonomy, Louise and Lenine formed a research partnership to provoke and promote intergenerational learning in public spaces. And the Walking Neighbourhood Project was born. So far, the project has explored neighbourhoods in Brisbane, Sydney and Bagot, Australia, Chiang Mai, Thailand, Seoul, South Korea and Kupio, Finland, amongst other places. The Walking Neighbourhood premise is simple. Children lead adult audience members on a curated tour of places of the children's interest in urban communities. This facilitates a new way for adults to see and experience public places, spaces and buildings. Children are placed in control of developing the artistic experience, guiding an audience, navigating the physical space and sharing their experiences of autonomy, all the while creating new friendships with people they do not know. Listen to the ways in which the Walking Neighbourhood Project encourages learner motivation, group collaboration and trust, community integration and empathy, and provides alternative ways to present knowledge and findings through alternative learning spaces.